Every Sunday, the place to be is who worship harvest Nalia. It's for you who loves the progi. Now we are gonna vibe. Join us for our in-person service here at Worship Harvest Nalia. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Your kids will love it too. Come have fun with us. It's a space to build your faith, hang out, and make new friends. We are looking forward to seeing you next Sunday at Worship Harvest Nalia, 9 a.m. Enjoy your week. It's time to go beyond survival. Don't just survive COVID. The only things you know are the things you are doing right now. is out now. You can listen to this uplifting music on Spotify, Apple Music and many streaming platforms. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a good morning. Welcome to Business Garage. I invite you to get up on your feet. Let us worship Jesus, who is alive in us. Amen. Amen. The scripture says that if any man be in Christ, Jesus is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new is come.
Clap your hands, everybody. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. And from the ash, I am born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You have more than my words could say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. I'll fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free in an ending grace. Cause it's you are. you give your neighbor a high five ha. yeah I know I'm stretching some people <laughs> give another one a high five welcome them tell them you are in the right place thank you for coming early for business garage welcome everyone online in the house to business garage this morning you are in the right place you are in the place where you are going to be stirred up to grow your business to increase financially with wisdom with inspiring stories and so in the right place welcome this is worship harvest my name is Blesso. i am privileged to be your host this morning for business garage i am excited about it i know some people somewhere are also excited <laughs> yeah <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so I'd like to ask to just remind ourselves who we are as a movement. We are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we are committed to 
catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world and here at Worship Harvest, we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Yeah, you have to add that peep peep. Um, yeah, whenever I do that now, I remember apostles, someone on the leaders camp night <laughs> about the different cars and uh, the effects. In case you don't know that someone, you can check it out online. Um, it's a special group of people who are with us in the room and online that I would like us to welcome if you are here for the very, very first time and you are our guest, um, you came to visit today. Um, could you please shoot up your hand if you're in the audience? We'd like to welcome you. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, I see them. I see them up there. They are very many. Yes. Come on, let's welcome our first time guests. Can you see them? Oh, yeah. Some people are not clapping. Oh. <laughs> Online, we have so many first-time guests in the building. You just need to be here next time so you can see it by yourself. And if you're online and you're just joining us for the first time, let us know in the chat. We'd like to welcome you um, and would like to celebrate and let you know that you are welcome home. We love visitors. We love guests at Worship Harvest. And right now, we, we don't come to the house of the Lord empty-handed, right? Yeah, because we believe God is here, and so we'd like to honor him with our gifts. So you can take your seats if you don't mind. I had forgotten to ask you to do that. Thank God for Revma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we, we don't come to the house of the Lord empty-handed. We are excited to honor the Lord with our gifts, with our possessions, with the first fruits of all our increase, with offerings, with tithes, and different things. So I, I know you came with an offering. Um, I would like to um, read you the numbers for those of you that are going to give online. Um, our MTN number, mobile money number, is 778 618 and the Airtel number is 0758-618-418. And our Momo Pen number on MTN is 148-722. Airtel is 116-0032. You can as well give through the website, um, worshipharvest.org forward slash give. Um, you'll find different giving options and we'll be excited to receive your offering. And I would like us to just put up your offering if you have it. If you're going to use a phone, put up the phone. If you're using an envelope, put up the envelope. I would like to pray a blessing. Even you online that is watching, do that right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity and blessing that we have to be in your house. And thank you, Lord, that you've enabled us not to come empty-handed. And so, Lord, we declare a blessing upon everyone that is giving, oh God. But it will come, it will come back to them a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running all over, that that is what men will pour into their bank accounts, into their businesses, into their bosoms, and whatever that they do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you excited? I am excited about giving. Some people are not excited. Are you excited? If you are, let me see it on your face, because your face is communicating. <laughs> Even you online, I see you. Turn on your smile. All right. So as we give, I would like to invite the awesome, most anointed, incredible worship team to worship with us. You can join us as we worship Jesus. If you can stand up, you can stand up as well. Command the waters and the wind There is not one thing you're not greater than You're greater than the mountain That's in front of me Cause you are greater You are so much greater You're greater than the power of the enemy so you are greater you are so much greater yes you are for all of my days you were God above the songs that I face
Previously on Business Garage. What did you have to do to get to where you are today as a business person? Because someone out there wants to do the same thing. I believe everyone's journey is slightly different. <clears throat> but fundamentally, I think there has to be a lot of ambition and enthusiasm for you to be able to succeed. Success does not, is not really a destination. It's a continuous journey. Along the way, you find opportunities <clears throat> and then you try to grasp them and be able to deliver on them. Having the correct relationships and networks also brings a lot of value. The value of relationships and networks in that is, a, is very understated. Relationships for me and networks are fundamental. But you cannot build them if you do not have uh, transparency, honesty, the love of people. Because some people build them because they want to benefit something from them. But relationships are much more than that. Because today, maybe I have built a relationship with Chris, but the opportunity is not yet available. Yeah. But five, ten years down the road, it is the same relationship I built in 1990 and 2010 that would probably usher me into that room where there's an opportunity. Two things critical, I found resilience and relationships. Resilience to be able to stay tough through the game, through the hard times. Also, most important, the relationship you built and the relationship is not built today for tomorrow's game. And through Business Guard, you always talked about people, employing the right people, training them, equipping them to be able to offer your service. So as we close, just tell us about that. There's no single successful entity that does not have the correct people who are willing to do extra business for the business. Business Garage, exploring kingdom business principles from God's word. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome again to Business Garage. People in the house, make some noise. Thank you again for joining us at Business Garage. Every Sunday morning at 7.20 a.m., we bring you stories of businesses who are doing business with Kingdom Principles. And we've been going through a series of oil and gas, understanding what opportunities are there in the oil and gas sector. Right now, I want you to share the link. Tell all your friends, relatives about what's happening now. Share the link right now. 
and we're going to start shortly with a powerful story. But before we do that, I want to send greetings to Abmo and Revma, the vision bearers of this business garage. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to learn business with Kingdom Principles. And everyone out there watching in all the different locations in Worship Harvest, here in Naria, uh, Gayaza, Makere, name it, all the 62 locations, you're welcome to Business Garage. This morning, I have with us a powerful gentleman, uh, Justice. Justice, you're very welcome. Uh, you're Thank going you. to tell us about who you are and what services you offer in the oil and gas sector. But before that, please send some greetings and then introduce yourself. People want to know who is just us, so they connect with you so that we can hear about your story. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, everybody that's watching us, everybody that's listening in. Um, it's a pleasure, first of all, to be hosted uh, on the business garage. and. Um, I'm happy and humbled that I've been invited uh, this morning. So yeah, my name is Tumwesi J. Justice. Uh, I'm Managing Director, Globen Industrial Services, and Globen, we are Faith. And I'll talk more about that. And uh, this morning, I want to send my greetings, first of all, to our business partners, starting with our employees uh, of Globen Industrial Services, our clients. <laughs> They are the reason we keep in business, and of course, my family, uh, my wife and kids, my father of five kids. Hey. Uh, hey. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, the two and, of us. Um, you know, we can do it. Those are two, two basketball teams <laughs> right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much. All right. So, just as people out there, first of all, want to connect with you. Who are you? What did, how, who, who, where did you grow up from? What's your history? What's your background? Uh, you're doing business now. Have you always done business? What is your business story? What's the journey? What has the journey been like to date? Oh, wow. Um, I, I wish I had um, a typical, convincing, and emotional business story. <laughs> but I don't have that. Um, generally, uh, I grew up from uh, uh, in Bushenya. I typically came to Kampala like many people to attend school, university. Um, I, I went to a primary school in, in Bushenya called Chamunga. Chamunga is Linet's village, by the way. Hey, Pastor Linet. <laughs> yes, Pastor ah. Linet's village. Okay. Uh, so after I went to Mbara High School for my O and A level and then joined Makere and studied mechanical engineering. Uh, so from Makere, I joined Coca-Cola as a trainee engineer. Uh, that was in 2006. Um, so I worked in Coca-Cola uh, from trainee engineer. I worked as um, a production supervisor, then a training uh, and projects coordinator. And then after in 20, um, 2010, I worked as a um, health and safety engineer. So um, after five years in, 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 in uh, Coca-Cola, I, I joined the oil and gas industry, uh, working for a contractor of Talo Oil. Uh, that was in 2011 uh, as a um, health and safety uh, manager. I worked there for three years. Then after I, I joined Total, I applied and joined Total Energies now, Total Energies Uganda. Mm -hmm. That time it was Total E&P. Um, so I worked uh, for Total Energies for, for five years up to 2018. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, in between, in between though, you know, um, as, I, as I was fully uh, employed, I was starting up uh, some, uh, a few businesses here and they are doing um <laughs> tell us what you are those businesses yes yeah. um first of all i was uh helping consulting for people mm -hmm. um because health and safety uh is an i don't i think i talk more about health and safety what we do yes you will um, later yeah okay. but um uh, so we were, uh, I was helping companies to set up health and safety management systems. Health and safety management systems basically uh, have to be in place for 
companies to to give an assurance to mm. their, their clients, clients to the public, public to the government that we will not injure people we will not pollute the environment while we are discharging our responsibilities or while we are delivering the business so so i was doing it um on chibalua <laughs> uh, not a proper business then after in two in 20 uh in 2000 and and um nine uh, we started a company with my colleague uh, Solomon called uh, Albertine Industrial Services. Mm. Uh, we wanted to, you know, serve the oil and gas industry, but we later found out that we did not understand the industry, <laughs> and uh, the business died <laughs> in its infancy. So uh, we abandoned Albertine, and um, so we kept our jobs, mm. but we kept, um, you know, serving. Uh, people who, who, who showed interest mm. and also looking for clients. So, so I worked for Total E and P up to 2018, and uh, and in 2018, I set up uh, Globen Industrial Services and made a decision that if I was going to to fully um, deliver the service of health and safety, I needed to uh, stop doing the job and focus full time on uh, what we call self-employment, but yes. on running a business. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. Because I later found out it's actually not self-employment, you're even employing other people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, so we started in 2018. Um, in 2018, in that same year, uh, so I put in my resignation. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had always had um, the desire to, you know, to, to, to run a business. But this was more of identifying an opportunity. Mm. Yeah, we identified an opportunity. And how this opportunity came, Chris, you will recall that I worked with you as well mm. when you were a contractor. Mm. I think you're still a contractor, Total Energies. So what we noted, um, uh, my job at, as, at Total was a health and safety engineer. And that role involved uh, interacting with um, a number of contractors mm. of Total. Yes. Uh, so uh, part of the role was to audit uh, contractors and make sure that they had health and safety standards that would enable them to participate in oil and gas mm. uh, in a safe manner. So uh, as I was doing these audits, I noted that actually, rather than just auditing, I could actually help these companies to, to build to this be system, yes. to be better. Uh, and I noted that this even was uh, uh, more, more prevalent with uh, the, you know, the small companies. Yes. The small companies were having a hard time breaking into the, 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 sector. the, the, the sector because of these standards. So I say, and I was doing this audit amongst other responsibilities at, at Total ENP. So. I thought to myself that I can focus on this mm. uh, and work with more companies. Don't wait for them even to first get in, but build systems to help yes. them get into the sector. Yes. So that's how uh, Globen was Started, born, yeah. uh, and and we are still doing. doing wow! The and same I think that's a typical end. journey for most professionals. Yes. Finish school as a professional, go into a company, get groomed, learn get mentored, and you decide eventually to take a, a step of faith. And that's the story of many people who are especially doing side hustles. And so many Absolutely. people are relating, are relating yes. with you. Yes. So what was the journey like? I know you told me about Globen. I know what Globen means. Yes. But what has the journey been from the beginning when you stepped out? I mean, everyone is running into these big companies, but you're stepping out because of something you've seen. How has the journey been? Have, but even after you stepped out, have, have, has it been, have you been received well? In this, because I know you target small uh, and medium enterprises. Tell us from uh, the beginnings. You stepped out, <laughs> then what? Would I say that I stepped into COVID? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in 2018, um, so I, I left uh, Total on the 30th of uh, September 2018. Um, I should say that. Um, 
Globen, first of all, Globen is um, it's actually a German word that means faith and belief. For me, it was um, a, a leap of faith to, to step out of uh, um, the, it now total is the fourth major oil and gas company, I think, globally. In, in, globally. Uh, total has been operating for over 100 years. Um, working for, I think it's the dream company to work for, really. Um, for me to say, okay, I want to step out of these 100 years of experience and um, comfort and stability, uh, and I would really, I want to thank Total for being uh, they are, they are a good employer, I should say, and uh, they have very good programs and, and you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is for really the young engineers and uh, other professionals out there. If you're offered an opportunity to work for Total Energies, please grab it. Um, it will be your next level company in terms of, of learning. So this was the typical um, comp uh, say, uh, corporate yes, company to yeah. work for. Mm -hmm. So for me to step out of that company into um, a company that I had registered in uh, July, on July 16th mm -hmm. of 2018, uh, it needed faith and belief. Uh, so we called our company Globen. And why Globen? Uh, why German? Why did we choose German? When you think German, you think quality. Mm. Uh, you think safety. Yeah. Yeah, yes. uh, when someone is wrong about their German car, they're like, yeah, it's German very safe, car, I can yes. do, you know. Technology One, yeah, so technology, safety, yeah. so okay. that's why we wanted to associate with German, because we are, we are a standards company. So, yeah, so we took that deep of faith and came out. Um, and before um, I came out, I think this is maybe something also I want to tell our... Um, viewers and our listeners out there that um, sometimes it's important, uh, not sometimes, all the time, it's important to be honest um, and to try and do a very good job where you are. Not strategically, it's the right thing to do, yes. but it may turn out that that is what will take you to the next mm, uh, as, as you're level. employed as you're serve employed well, serve well diligently and yes. when the time comes to live live well yes uh it's cliche that uh, they say don't burn the the, the, the bridges, bridges yes. but in fact it is very very important that you do not burn the bridges if anything reinforce the bridges <laughs> that they should stay standing yeah, yeah. Yes. so when i was going to to leave uh, total energies my boss uh, was a, a french uh, man fabia uh, i went to fabia and told him i'm, I'm leaving total he's like How? what are you talking about <laughs> what, what are you talking Why about yeah? uh, we've just started this thing it's um, the opportunities are immense coming up as you can i left before this phase yes yeah and maybe this is also something i should say don't wait for when everything is up in the papers and they're saying opportunities and that's when you're starting to plan you need sometimes to plan for an opportunity uh when it is still shaping up yeah. so it was like um things have just uh, begun I had been earmarked for an expatriation position. He told me about this. You're going to be expatriated. You, you know, why, why are you, why, why, are, you why are you leaving? I was like, look here. Uh, Fabia, I appreciate, very good boss. Um, I've worked with Total, a great employer. I'm very happy. I'm not leaving because I am dissatisfied with, um, with, with the conditions or with the job. It's that I have identified an opportunity to work with, uh, with the local suppliers and contractors to improve their health and safety management systems. Currently, the way my job is structured is that this, I, I, I dedicate about 20% of my time to this. The rest of the time, I am you know, doing other things, you know, arranging presentations, arranging trainings in the company. Uh, I said, I want to fully focus on this. Sir, I want your, your blessing. I want to go out and do this. 
It's like, brilliant, that's a very good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good idea. And so I got his, his support. So I didn't lie to him that I was going to, you know, to, further studies. for further studies or take care of a patient or I had a new bride or something. Like, you know, these are the kinds of typical <laughs> stories that, you know, people come up with. Hmm? Yeah, so, and, um, and it's, it's amazing that I think I got my first opportunity. You talked about how it has been. Yes. So, living total on a high note, and at the point of, by the way, I am going to do this. I have no problem with anyone. If um, uh, I, I had a way, I would stay. If I, was, I didn't have the conviction to start this, I would stay. Um, I think set a very good ground for me. Because remember Total and, and Sinok, these are the leaders of the oil and gas industry. So you don't want to be in a situation where they're bad books. Uh, you're in the board, bad books. And I think I got my first opportunity from Fabia. He mm. called me to give me my first consultancy And job. you told me something earlier that you turned your job into a business. That's something we've taught here. I know Apostle yes. has talked about it a lot. You mentioned that to me. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Um, from what I, I, I talked about, um, my experience mm. has been in health and safety for for the last now almost 15 years. Yeah. Um, so, yes, you're correct. I turn my job because what we do right now is that we are doing health and safety consultancy for a number of clients, yes. right? Mm. When I was in, in, in Total, in Coca-Cola, in Otec, the companies I worked for, I was doing the same thing for one client, who was my employer. Uh, so I scaled up, I scaled up my job. Um, and I think also, this also helped. Doing a business uh, from my job helped me to start small without needing a lot of resources. Yes. I already had the resources yeah. um, in terms of the knowledge mm. um, uh, and in terms of the, the networks, the, the health and safety professionals I've yeah. been interacting with. Yeah, so in a way, I took my job out of the company oh, into, into yeah? the space. Yes. Into every, for, for everyone to yes. consume. Yes, so I scaled my job up. Yes. yes. Now tell us, so people out there are wondering, okay, health and safety, you know we've been doing a series for the last three weeks, and everyone's talking about health and safety, health and safety, health and safety. Now you're here, I know you do training, you serve uh, lots of companies in yeah. training, but yeah. also supplies. Yes. What is this fuss about health and safety? Tell us, uh, okay. what's, what's the problem? Uh, Why is okay. it an important the, the, thing? It's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> health and safety. What? Yes, tell us, okay. tell us, tell us. Uh, I think health and safety, like I, I usually say, the, the requirements or the demands for, for companies to, to have health and safety standards or systems mm. is like the requirement for you to have a driving license mm. uh, to go on the road to drive a car. Mm. It's kind of basic. And uh, for some industries, or for some sectors, this is more um, important, is more critical than uh, others. Um, for example, the oil and gas industry, the aviation industry, uh, pharmaceutical. pharma pharmaceuticals, food, uh, food industry, um, mining, generally their standards or requirements are a notch higher than um, let's say, uh, let's say a, a, a service industry like, um, what, what should we say, like education. Yes. Yeah. Though, actually, you'll notice that, we realize, also we realize yeah. that we actually, health and safety is in every Because there's sector. a law on health and safety, so yes. the standard is, if you actually read the law, yes. it's what the, the companies require. So it's supposed yes. to be generally business practice. Yes, yeah. the Occupational Health and Safety Act mm. of 2006, actually, mm requires workplaces um, to implement a form of health and safety management system that is commensurate with um, their scale and level of operations. So it's, that, don't, don't, it's not about oil and gas? No, that's it's why you see... general business practice. Even in um, a space like this one, you will see emergency exits, yes. you will require to have an assembly point, you will need a firefighting system, yes. you will need means of people accessing up, um, yeah. you know, in the auditorium, you need um, 
handrails for the stairs emergency all that is case someone collapses yes emergency yeah. contacts yes. you know yeah. and this is the typical the typical things oil and gas is asking only that mm. for them they are insisting that you, you must have, have them, them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes out there you you may not have it and you know it will pass and someone will let you operate yeah. but i also know that the department of occupation health and safety and the minister of gender yeah. and labor no they have actually been at this mm. they visit workplaces if you're not meeting the minimum standards they mm. close you down yes. we're actually not only working for oil and gas yes no we but are working for, you tell it because yes. some people think ah this man yeah. is serving all the oil and no. gas sector only no. No. all other sectors you serve yes and you will tell us some more stories go ahead yes mm. so um so for the oil and gas sector mm. uh, and let's say uh, just like aviation and like we've talked it ha uh, these standards have been informed by uh, what is called learning from events mm. or uh, return on experience uh, the, you know the, the the industry has has grown through a series of disasters the latest one um, i think the latest big disaster was um, uh, the deep water horizon um, blowout. Yes. Um, I think there was even a movie that was made on that disaster mm. called um, yeah, the, the deep water horizon uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm. Basically uh, when an oil, um, because the technology of drilling oil or the way uh, where oil is situated under the, um, the earth surface is that you're operating uh, under high pressures, you're operating under high temperatures. So if there is an explosion that is maybe triggered by a fire uh, because maybe someone was care carelessly, you know, smoking, mm. you're smoking and you set a facility on fire, mm. the, the, repercussions. the repercussions, the size of the, um, the, cost, of the, is of the, the cost is huge, yeah. the loss of lives, reputation uh, the image uh, issues around uh, yeah. the company are so huge that nobody will allow anyone to go in their operation and put oh, such yes. such facilities at risk mm. and also uh, maybe that's also in terms of those human lives and, and stuff but there is the environment bit oh yes there yes. is the social bit, and these are the two other critical areas. Tell us about those two as well. um, for, for example, you will notice that our project um, here in Uganda, the, let's say the Tirenga oil and gas uh, project or the Kingfisher oil and gas project, these are com uh, projects that are located uh, either on the Lake Albert, uh, on the River Nile, uh, in the Maction Falls National Park. Mm very very sensitive ecosystems is, yes. huh? uh, that are being watched and scrutinized by everybody yeah. world over you cannot afford to pollute uh, river nile you cannot afford to go in the maction falls yeah. and you're knocking that you're, you're killing animals because yes. you're not controlling uh, speed limits or you know you go up with trucks that are leaking oil and yet they bring a lot of income to the country of well. course yeah. so uh, the commitments, I think, from the oil companies from the start have been this project is not coming to replace tourism. No. This project can 100% coexist, if not augment the oil, uh, sorry, the tourism industry. So the oil and gas uh, companies are under immense scrutiny to ensure that um, uh, they fulfill these obligations. Mm. Uh, then the projects are located within local communities. Mm. So there is an obligation to provide jobs, to employ the local people, uh, to ensure that the projects are not a nuisance to the people uh, who are already in the, in the project area. So, uh, so for that matter, the standards are high and we are all going to up our game. And the companies are already doing it, some companies, and I want to call upon all the other companies, small, medium, large, yes. to embrace standards. Yes. Yeah. And later we'll talk about cost. Some people say cost, cost, cost. But now, here you are, you're focusing on health and safety, but earlier you told me you're working with farmers. Yes. 
and we know that the oil and gas sector, there's people you're serving are not just the technical businesses. Yes. You're serving accounting firms because they're yes. going to ask them yes. for health and safety policies. Yes. You're serving farmers because yes. they're going to ask them for, and yes. many of us want to tap into the sector. Yes. Remember that even if I'm not working for Total, yes. but I'm working for a Total subcontractor yes. or the second subcontract, I will still be asked yes. because they have to report eventually yes. to Total. Yes. Tell us about some of the businesses you're serving because yes. people out there are thinking, ah, me, I'm not Total, I can't come to yes. Justice for, yes. to help me yes. because the need is real. Yeah. I might be an accounting firm, might be, I know a law firm which has done health and safety. Yes. So what kind of businesses do you serve and what are the benefits? Tell us some stories. Uh, okay, um, of course, I've, I've worked for a, a, a number of law firms. I've worked for a number of uh, companies that are in the medical. Um, training of uh, drivers because that's uh, a specialized kind of area. Uh, we are working with, um, of course, logistics companies. I'm working with a company who, who, who is uh, actually, what they're doing is to train farmers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a training company. Why is it important? Um, it's very, you know, first of all, like we said, uh, that health and safety is, um, it's like, getting a driving license. Mm. You don't need to be a big company for you to, have to, to, having, to have a driving <laughs> license. It's that for you to be on your, the Ugandan roads, you need to have this. Uh, so I, also, I, I wouldn't want this to be looked at as a requirement for the, for the big boys. Mm, yes. No. <laughs> um, you not see, it's not for the big boys. <laughs> it's for everyone. Because you see, um, if you listen to agree, Agri, when he was here last time, yes. he talked about the supply chains. The supply chains are starting with the farmers, okay? If you're talking about food. The supply chains are talking about, uh, are dealing with someone who wants to supply, let's say, uh, toilet consumables. Uh, the supply chain, if, you know, it, the supply chains start with me and you. So, um, but for you to be able to tap into this supply chain, which you know, extends up to the last person, you need to accept, and I think this is very key, that you're going to have some level of standards. Okay. okay. If you want to do any level of business, doesn't yes. matter at what For level. example, even if someone may want to come and take your eggs, but the final consumer who is uh, total wants to know the date of production. This uh, GCC cannot produce the date of production of the eggs which they didn't produce. Mm. It's you, the farmer. The farmer, whether you didn't go to school, uh, it does not matter. But please note down that these, these eggs have been laid today on the 28th of June such that this gentleman will also be helped. You know, there used to be this saying that help the police to help you. Yes, yes. <laughs> help this uh, contractor or subcontractor because I think this chain is that some of us will be sub, sub, subcontractors, yes. you know. But help this person who is buying from you to be accountable. This is all about accountability. He's going to account to the next guy. The next guy has to account to the next person. The eggs is saying, uh, they say, okay, date of production, uh, uh, these things of debts for us, we don't do, we just produce eggs. No, quality demands that first in, first out, first produced, first consumed. So, uh, this is very important, and that's the message we are bringing. And, and, basic keep record keeping. Yes, and that's what we are doing mm. to bring this message even to the people at, at, um, in the farm, people at the, short, at the shop floor to say, please have some sort of record keeping, have some sort of uh, good manufacturing practices. Mm. 
someone is going to want to visit your farm. They want to see the pesticides that you're using at the farm. They want to see where you're keeping the, if you're, you know, into uh, you're rearing the pigs or whatever, or goats. They want to see the farm. They want to see what you're feeding the animals on. They want to see the chemicals you're using. They want to see if you're vaccinating. This is not going to be done by total. It's done by the last person, the farmer. So we have to embrace uh, standards, whether we are, you know, typical Ugandans, farmers. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I can say. And then, so what, sorry, maybe yeah. there's something else you talked about that I also wanted to... Legal compliance. Mm. Yes. Legal compliance, uh, it's, not part of, it's not part of health and safety, but it's also part of... Um, uh, I notice that um, people tend to think that legal compliance is for the big, for the big guys. I really want to encourage uh, you and me... Uh, the Ugandan that is, that is listening that compliance uh, should be embraced and it's not an option. Compliance helps us to tap into opportunities. It does not block them. Yes. Because like you see, it's a ripple effect. URA requires um, total to account. Total requires the next guy to account. So someone who, for example, has a teen uh, is willing to pay some some sort of tax is going to be preferred to someone who is uh, you're not registered with URA, you're not uh, you are unbanked, you don't have a bank account, uh, your business is not registered registered with URSB, you have employees but you don't want to subscribe to NSSF. I think these are the blocking points yeah. for ordinary small Ugandan companies which th which think that you know. Legal compliance is for the Not, people. Yeah. It's for you and me. It's for the and small company. And yet we company. know that on paper, legal compliance and building systems helps you create a brand. Ab absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes think brand is yeah. about advertising and having a nice logo and all that. No. No. These things help improve your brand in the sector you're focusing on. Yes, absolutely. Now I want to encourage you guys to ask questions, please. Ask lots of questions. Uh, Mr. Ariho Kamara is asking, how has faith been a pillar in your business? We'll go back to the actual. But uh, how has faith been a pillar in your business? Um, for starters, you need faith to start. Mm. <laughs> you need faith to say, um, yeah, this is an opportunity. I believe that it's there uh, and I'm going for it. So for me, I think um, that's the starting point of faith. And also to believe that um, our God is... Um, is the creator of heaven and earth and all these things, including the oil, by the way. Yeah. Tell us. God is the it's one who created. Do you know that there is no human being that adds on, on the process of creating oil? It's God working out the ecosystem, working out everything that the, to ensure that the oil the is there. Resources. So, um, you need to understand that these are God's resources and for us, actually, we are stewards of these resources, yes. and actually, I'm a proud, I'm a proud, a proud steward. steward. And um, I walk, I walk in that faith that these are my father's things, and I am actually contributing to to bring them to to, wow. to his people. So, wow. yeah, I have that understanding. Um, and Genesis, one twenty eight, tells us that. Um, uh, we are we are supposed to take dominion. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Dominion. Genesis yes. one one uh, one twenty eight is mandates us to take Dominance. these things and uh, work them out. To take these resources, uh, modify them, um, add Pans value to them. them. I think that's what we were created to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you need to understand that, and you need to understand that you're part of this movement to take dominion and to change things and uh, to work things out and to produce the goods and services yeah yes wonderful wonderful how many people do you employ uh, i employ 12 people 12 people yes if you don't employ 12 people don't clap <laughs> 12 people so you're impacting probably over 60 people yeah, in this those session. are the permanent staff 
without but of course when we get a uh, big consultancies we you, you know we take on people on a consultancy basis yeah yes so tell us right in there let's lean into that you do lots of services now there's building system but there's also the training angle yes. and then there are products tell us about some of the other things that you do so uh, our scope involves um, uh, so what like I told you that this uh, Globen is uh, an opportunity that was identified and is an opportunity that we are still uh, building on. So um, one of the things that we noted also was uh, that companies were failing, not necessarily because they didn't have uh, uh, things in place, but the way they structure their tenders. Yes. Uh, so one of our services is that we work with companies to do uh, bid winning proposals or tenders. Uh, we usually focus on um, health and safety component uh, because we notice that the oil and gas companies have this all big one. requirement. So we, we do that, uh, helping companies during the tendering process. Two, we also noticed that uh, sourcing for these employees sometimes, the health and safety engineers, is a problem. So we said, we will source uh, engineers for you, health and safety engineers for you. Then, of course, we noted that there was a need for training services, so we do that as well. Then um, we also do uh, health and safety audits, gap analysis to see where the company is, and then we advise uh, on, on, on uh, what you can do to improve. Of course, we know a big component in health and safety is uh, personal protective equipment. I, I know most people think that health and safety is about a helm, is PPE. It, it is maybe about uh, three or five percent of health and safety. But we said, okay, we can also provide you with uh, this personal protective equipment. So we have an arm that deals with um, uh, personal protective equipment. So yeah. the training really is to support people to change that mindset. Yes. Because as yes. you know, we've not really harnessed, we've not done a lot in health and safety. No. But the training yeah. comes in and helps people yeah. to change their mind yeah. and to appreciate yeah, uh, absolutely. the standards and yes. work with you. Absolutely. Great. So what do you, what is, what's the future? Uh, people now, people here, some accountants, what, farmers, what are the opportunities in the future, in the sector? What do you see from where you are? Because your, your business serves everyone. Yes. Unlike yes. particular yes. industries, serves yes. everyone. What are the opportunities for the people, but also for you as we close? Uh, the opportunities, of course, I mean, there the, are the opportunities in service. Uh, there are opportunities, I mean, this industry is going to have uh, maybe over 200,000 people directly perhaps em, em, employed. They, need they need PPE. They, they all need PPE. Uh, yes, they need PPE, but also these people, they need food. Uh, Uganda, we are an agriculture-based economy. So uh, if we can supply our food, I think that will be great. So there's, the, there's future in um, the service industry, there's future in providing food. Um, but I should also, I want to overemphasize really that please comply put systems in place such that you do not miss the opportunities. Comply with the law, register the business, file for your returns, uh, register with URSB, uh, and also be a friend of financial institutions. You mm. need money. Mm. I mean, if you're given a contract, even if it's for $10,000, mm. that's about 40 million Uganda shillings. Mm. If you do not have a good relationship with a financial institution. I'm not only talking about even a bank. I'm talking about your circle. Like HMC? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll talk about HMC later, yeah. but go ahead. Yes. Have a relationship with a financial institution because you will need uh, to be financed to execute whichever contract you get. Even if now someone tells you, bring me uh, 10,000 trays of eggs. 10,000 trays of eggs and you find you do not have one million shillings, you cannot rely on calling people mpola, yompola, you know, no, it cannot work like that. We need, so we need to formalize. We need to formalize ourselves. We need to make ourselves ready, even for the, that small opportunity that's coming to the farmer. Yeah. yeah. The farmer needs inputs. Yeah. All right. Two questions here as we close. How did COVID affect your plans? What did you have to do different? 
and then someone is asking for existing or graduate trainee opportunities, if any, in your company. How did COVID affect you, and what opportunities do you have for graduate trainees? Um, because uh, we do, again we do our job um, through other companies, so definitely we were heavily impacted. Um, I did not lay off any of our 12 staff, thankfully, uh, we, but we took cuts, we took pay cuts, and uh, we really uh, scaled down. The contracts were not coming for sure, as many, but we had two running contracts that stayed, and those really helped us to, to go through COVID. But we really, really scaled down. We worked from home, like, uh, okay, forcefully also, <laughs> because uh, the SOPs were requiring that we stay home, but also we embraced uh, working um, uh, off-site, off staying and working from home, and uh, minimizing our expenditures. We really had a shoestring budget <laughs> yes. that we worked with through COVID. Have we fully recovered? Not yet, but we are recovering. You're on your way. We, we are, we are on our way. Um, and uh, about uh, opportunities, we hold, um, we have a course called QHSE Fundamentals, that is Quality, Health, Safety, and Environment Management System Fundamentals. This course, um, we give it to fresh engineers, uh, people that have just started a career in health and safety. It, it exposes, it exposes um, uh, the participants to basics of health and safety and people who do our course at least are able to apply for a health and safety officer position mm. in different uh, companies yes yeah so you've so. had find justice go learn get some idea about what health health and safety is about so friends and ladies and gentlemen friends let's appreciate justice for sharing his story and telling us what opportunities are out there and what he has done. There is hope. Remember, I started this business in 2018. Even you can plug into the sector. It's not for businesses that have waited for a long time. There is an opportunity. You might be an accounting firm. You might be a health and safety, uh, human resource firm. Whatever business you're in, there's going to be lots of opportunities for you. So we're encouraging you to do that. And you heard that he did all this by faith. So thank you, Justice, for sharing your story. Thank you. I'd like to talk about health. Uh, I'd like to talk about Harvest Multi Purpose Cooperative. At every location out there in Worship Harvest, there is someone ready to register you as a member. So if you're a member of Worship Harvest and you're in a missional community, register for HMC. It's the next big thing you had that the future will need money to serve uh, whatever businesses we are in. And as we like to do here at Worship Harvest, before we close, we want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And the journey that you had uh, from justice and all our business journeys are a journey that God has, man has given us. We are stewards of God's resources. The businesses you're running is owned by God, and you're given a responsibility to steward it. And the first thing for you to do is to have a relationship with a person who will give you the opportunity to steward that business. So we want to give you an opportunity right now. If you don't know Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have no clue about God, we want to give you this opportunity to know him as the Lord and Savior. And the scripture says you start with confessing with your mouth. And if you're such a person out there and you want to confess with your mouth, say this prayer with me and you will be saved. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity today that you've given me to pronounce you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you've given me an opportunity to life, that when I announce that you're my Lord and Savior, when I believe you as my Lord and Savior, I'll be saved. You will salvage me in whatever situations I'm in. You will call me a son. You will give me righteousness. And thank you for this opportunity. So I believe that you're my Lord and Savior, and I declare today, so take my life and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So if you just say that prayer and you believe it, call this number 0775-642-449, 0775-642-449. Someone behind that line will tell you what to do next because you've just given your life to Christ.
but also if you're a business, if you're a businessman business people will go through lots of things it's the business uh, the journey of a businessman is not easy we go through lots of trials and temptations but we know that God promised he will not leave us nor forsake us that the plans he has for us are to prosper us and not to harm us so if you want anything any prayers for you for your business for the journey you're taking or you're confused about how your business is going please call the same number and someone behind that line will pray for you and will pray with you so ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching us the next month we are going to bring you another series of business stories now not in oil and gas but in different uh, sectors so stay tuned and also if you're watching there's a service coming on the 9 a.m service standing starting right here and we're talking about healing we're talking about healing so Stay on the line and watch the main garage at 9 a.m. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday. Every Sunday, the place to be is who worship harvest Nalia. It's for you. Who loves the progi? Now we are gonna vibe. Join us for our in-person service here at Worship Harvest Nalia. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Your kids will love it too. Come have fun with us. It's a space to build your faith, hang out, and make new friends. We are looking forward to seeing you next Sunday at Worship Harvest Nalia at 9 a.m. Enjoy your week. Is here, are you ready? It's time to go beyond survival. Don't just survive COVID. The only things you know are the things you are doing right now. live album is out now you can listen to this uplifting music on spotify apple music and many streaming platforms